Welcome back. Today we are going to discuss attention in encoder decoder architecture. Earlier we discussed that an LSTM can be used for the encoder and another LSTM can be used as the decoder. Here both the encoder LSTM and the decoder LSTM are unfolded. For the encoder we have four words. Where do you live? That's why four unfolded LSTMs are shown. But in reality, this is just one LSTM which is working recursively. The decoder has five inputs. Start, then I live in Texas. These are the five inputs. As discussed previously in teacher forcing during training time, these words will be inputs to the LSTM one after another. During inference, however, the predicted word will move forward until we reach an end of sequence. Anyway, this is the encoder LSTM and this is the decoder LSTM for a chat application that we discussed earlier. Now I will explain what attention is. Let me start with why attention is required for long sequences. With an LSTM-based encoder-decoder architecture, the decoder relies only on the context vector to understand the actual input against which the decoder is predicting. For long sequences in the encoder, the context vector might not capture all the intricacies of the input. When the decoder is generating a word, it could perform better if we could feed the decoder additional context about some relevant words from the encoder. For example, the output hidden state for the word Texas could be contextually associated with the hidden state of the word where in the encoder LSTM. The hidden state associated with the word I of the decoder is probably more associated with the hidden state generated for the word U in the encoder. This association or strength of association of a hidden state output of the decoder with hidden state outputs of the encoder or words in the encoder is known as attention. Let me show you the attention scores or the association between the encoder and decoder outputs as a heat map at some state of the model. Notice here that the decoder's hidden state of I has more association with the word U here. So whenever the decoder is generating the hidden state of I at certain point, if you compute the similarity between the hidden state of I and the hidden state that was generated for where do U, the hidden state of U, and compute the similarity, this has more blue indicating that among these, this word U is associated more with the decoder encoder's word I. Similarly, in this context, encoder's do is highly associated with the word live, so and so forth. Consider that this heat map is constructed after generating one output of the decoder. In reality, somehow, if we can make sure that these associations are automatically included in the process, then we can say that in the encoder-decoder architecture, we have included attention. Now let's see how we can incorporate this idea of attention in our LSTM-based encoder-decoder architecture. So let me show you one example of how we can compute attention. Attention is generated for each prediction of the decoder. So the decoder LSTM recursively predicts the next word. So every time we need to compute the attention. Here let's see that for this particular input token in the LSTM, this input token start, we somehow generate the attention which is a vector and we include that attention as concatenation with the hidden state output for the word start and then we use it for the prediction. So with the hidden state, we will concatenate the context vector. Now this context or the context vector is influenced by the attention of the outputs generated here when the encoder was recursively generating hidden states for each of the words here. 
let me first explain how the entire calculation occurs for attention computation then i will provide a full rundown of these calculations the hidden state that is coming out of the lstm for the first token in this case start is this one we are calling this the query again the query is the hidden state output of an lstm for a given token notice that for this decoder at this point the input was where do you live since we have four words in the encoder we have four hidden states so for this word where this hidden state was generated so consider that this is the hidden state and this one is indicating both the hidden state and the cell state here we are retrieving the hidden state generated for the word where this one is the hidden state generated for the word do this one is the hidden state generated for the word you this one is the hidden state generated for the word live so now this encoder output is a combination of all these four hidden states coming for these four words now if we had 10 words in the encoder then there would be 10 hidden states the encoder output will combine all the 10 hidden states but in this context where do you live we have four hidden states combined here these four hidden states are called keys so all the hidden state outputs of all those words in the encoder are called keys now this keys this set of keys is the same as value so the term key and value are actually the same here for lstm based encoder decoder attention mechanism again query is the hidden state output of a given token in the decoder part key is the set of all hidden states of the encoder value is the same as keys okay let's now handle the operation between key and the query the length of the query and the length of a key that is a hidden state output for a word in the encoder is the same here we have four numbers in the query vector so each key vector also has a length of four so we can compute similarity between the query vector and each of those hidden state vectors so here what we are doing is we are computing the dot product between this query and this hidden state vector which will give us a scalar again in this query and this second vector this query and this third vector this query and this fourth vector so we will have four dot products so each dot product is reflecting the similarity between the query and the key or hidden state and those dot products will be considered the attentions associated with each of these words however those of attention values will not be normalized if we have something probabilistic as the attention weights that will be convenient because then we can multiply each of these vectors to weigh their contributions in the final context vector so what we are going to do here at the end of the attention operation is we will apply a softmax operation between the dot product of the query vector and all the vectors of the key so when we have four values generated by dot product of this 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 and this after applying the softmax we will have a probabilistic distribution the meaning is that the summation of the attention weights generated will be one now notice that this will sum up to almost one i skipped the digits after the fourth one after the decimal point so it might be close to 0 0.99 or so but it is supposed to be 1.0 so what this attention weight vector is indicating is that this particular vector which is the first vector hidden state vector which was generated for where this has a weight of 0 0.2495 this second vector which was generated for the word do this has a weight of 0 0.2446 this third vector has a weight of 0 0.2325 and this fourth vector has a weight of 0 0.2733 
here 0.2733 is the highest value hence this query is more associated with this fourth vector so this fourth vector was the output for leave and again this query is the output hidden state for the word start so it makes sense it looks like i leave so the next word leave has more weight but there is no guarantee that there will be a clear relationship between vectors of the hidden state output of a word in the decoder and the hidden state output of a word in the encoder because this particular scenario is just one snapshot of entire epoch Anyway, these are the weights which are called attention weights. So attention weights are calculated to find out the relationship strength between the query vector and each of the hidden state outputs for each of the words we have in the encoder at some point. Now, remember that this value, it contains four vectors. So we multiply each vector with the corresponding attention weight. And then we sum up each of those weighted vectors. As a result, we receive a new vector. And this combined new vector is called the context vector. This context vector is concatenated with the query vector, which is the hidden state output for the word start. So concatenating the context vector with the hidden state vector we predict the next word. The expected target word in this example is i. And the target word will help define the loss value or the loss function. Now during training with teacher forcing, i will become an input for the next iteration of the LSTM. During inference, the predicted word will become the input for the next iteration. In that next iteration, a new hidden state will be generated, which will become the query vector of that iteration. Against that query vector, new attention weights will be generated, and hence a new context vector. The context vector will be concatenated with the hidden state of the LSTM to predict the word leave. The process that is the attention generation and concatenation of a context vector will occur in all subsequent iterations. Now notice that this prediction is not a result of only this hidden state, but also it is a result of how these attention weights were computed and how this context vector was generated. This is a plain and simple example of attention weights and how it can influence the generation of the next word in an LSTM decoder. Now let's take a look at the example more closely. Now how the dot product is calculated between this particular vector and this query vector, it's actually cell-wise multiplication than addition. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.1 plus 0 0.6 times 0 0.2 plus 0 0.7 times 0 0.3, 0 0.8, times 0 0.4. We add all of those elements and we get 0 0.7. Now for the query and the second vector, we have this calculation. We have 0 0.68, the dot product between the query and the third hidden state vector of the input. We have this calculation. We have 0 0.63, the dot product between the query and the fourth vector will generate a weight of 0 0.79. So we have these weights computed from the dot products. Notice that the summation of these weights is more than one. We want to normalize it to a probabilistic situation where the summation will be 1. That's why we apply softmax function. For 0 0.7, we have this particular formula. Let me reduce the size of my picture here. So for 0 0.7, when normalized between 0 and 1 via softmax, we have 0 0.2495, which is here. For 0 0.68, we have 0 0.2446, which is here. For 0 0.63, we have 0 0.2325, which is here. For 0 0.79, we have 0 0.2733, which is here. So these are our 
attention weights in the summation will be one for the attention weight vector. Moving to the next calculation, after the attention weights are calculated, so now each of those vectors will be multiplied by the corresponding attention weight. So here we have the hidden state vector. This one, we are multiplying this by 0 0.2495. The second hidden state vector is multiplied with 0 0.2446, so and so forth. All of them are added. And after the addition, we have this vector, which is this context vector, which is in turn concatenated with the hidden state generated for the current word start. This entire process will be repeating. Notice that query, key, and value, these are computed during the process. A more modern version of encoder-decoder architecture is the transformers that revolutionized the large language models. Now, in the transformer architecture, those items, query, key, and values, they are actually learned. Here, key and value, they are the same. In transformers, they are different. Transformer is much more complex, which we'll discuss in the coming days. But concept-wise, this is attention. So when you use attention in the decoder part, when the decoder is generating the next word, attention coming from the encoder helps it understand the context better. Instead of just using the context, which comes as the final output of the encoder, if we can provide context for each word, that helps the decoder predict better or infer better. So all these actually happen with backpropagation. So the backpropagation happens in such a way in every epoch, in every batch, in such a way that the weights and biases of all the LSTM cells are set to provide the best attention. And that is in a nutshell what attention is. Thank you very much for watching.